Over the course of the last year, we lost 600,000 lives in the United States, many more around the world. That can't happen again. Not when it's within our control to prevent it. It would be unconscionable, unethical, irresponsible, and the height of insanity to allow what happened over the last 12 months to ever repeat itself in the future. We've had this global traumatic experience and we've been put on notice that um, these biological agents can disrupt societies, disrupt life for, for people and, and cause a huge t human toll. What we have learned is the value of um, the political will, global political will, um, and uh, investing um, extensively um, towards a cause and how that um, significantly accelerated our ability to get to where we are now in such a short space of time. And these are lessons that can be leveraged towards other diseases, whether it's HIV, whether it's influenza. There really has to be significant political will. There has to be significant investment. We just had a coordinated response against this virus. To an extent, it's quite uplifting because it shows what we can do when we put our minds to it, but it's slightly depressing because we needed a pandemic to get the impetus to make us do this. I think the most important thing is political will, political commitment from the G7 and G7 Plus with a kind of a real action. So we should ask them to work together in terms of the fighting against the um, virus infection, virus pandemic. You need public understanding, public involvement, compartment. Uh, but most importantly, you need the politicians, politics, uh, politicians' commitment or will. Fundamentally, we should be thinking about these threats from nature as threats to our national security. It's a natural origin, but its danger and threat to us is equal or greater to what we experience from human origin threats to our national security. And if we adopt that national security mindset, we'll invest in the vaccine development, we'll invest in the public health infrastructure, we'll invest in the stockpiles that we need to adequately and effectively prevent disease and fight it if it occurs in the future. I believe strongly that the word national security must be added to what we are dealing with here. If it's a national security threat, then you take it, you look at it differently from a human security threat or just a, a health security threat. It's really important to think about biosecurity in the same framework that we think about national security. And uh, you know, if you talk to people who are running our Pentagon, they know that the last thing they want to do is fight a war. What they want is deterrence. They want to have preemptive uh, diplomacy and diplomatic solutions that reduce the probability that we would ever have to send a soldier into the battlefield. All countries seem to be willing to invest extraordinary amounts of money, significant fractions of their GDP in national defense. And it's because they need to protect their population. But protection takes many different forms. It's not just about building missiles. I think that building vaccines is equally important, if not more so, because the probability of getting hit with a pandemic seems to be higher than getting hit with nuclear missiles. We're not talking about huge resources relative to the benefits that they produce. The United States signed into law in March a $1.9 trillion bailout package to help our economy go through the pandemic. $1.9 trillion. If we think about what it takes to develop a stockpile of vaccines for, let's say, the top 15 most deadly infectious diseases, we are talking about something on the order of 25 to $50 billion. If we think about a $50 billion effort to deal with future pandemics, that's less than 4% of that total. Uh, it's very, very inexpensive to be dealing with this if we end up getting the political will 
to make it so. Yeah, so I use a very simple example of insurance. It pains me every month to be paying this premium. And I think, what's the value in it? Until something happens and I need to be paid out in South African rands, 100,000 rand. Um, and then I realize that, wow, if it weren't for this, not having it would be very, very expensive and probably very difficult to absorb rather than saying what is it going to cost us in, in terms of time, effort and money. I think the def defense analogy that you use um, um, talks to this as well. The cost of not having it, I think is too costly to, uh, to contemplate. So the hope is that by looking at analogies like national defense, like other forms of public spending, social security, healthcare and so on, uh, policymakers will understand the need to put resources into this very important area. If some of the countries that have made the, this kind of investment and have a workforce that moves at somewhere along the, the pathway of this, of this ecosystem for implementation, um, they do far better, they come out of it more quickly, their economy is less devastated, there's less loss of life. The, the commitment to get the message out there, um, uh, to, to, to get buy-in where you can. It's not going to happen everywhere around the world, but you start somewhere um, and you build from it. From my perspective, uh, we can't begin planning for an influenza pandemic any too soon. And I wouldn't be surprised at all that uh, there may even be a pause after the pandemic starts to wane where people say, I'm done with it. I don't want to even hear about a pandemic again. That's the time when real leadership is going to have to step forward and say, no, we're going to hear about this again because the next one could be tomorrow. We should be prepared for the fact that uh, influenza pandemic could be much worse. Having a UIV type vaccine is absolutely sensible because um, you know, we don't want to take that risk. Influenza remains a very challenging disease for which the vaccines are, are really important in public health, but not nearly as effective on a percentage basis as the, uh, the COVID-19 vaccines. So keeping the pressure on influenza vaccines so as to get vaccine technologies that do go to say 90% efficacy that would be really important in terms of public health. So if you have something that's going to protect people for five to ten years and it's going to um, deal with the seasonal flu strains and then potentially something that might come along that's, you know, like the 1917-1918 pandemic, um, you know, hopefully it would be a no-brainer for people to say, yes, we need that. <laughs> so I, I think if there's certain platform technology that um, is amenable for flu vaccines in general, whether they're seasonal or um, universal flu vaccines. The ideal scenario is that we are doing these things, you know, during what we call peacetime. Universal influenza vaccines have not got the attention they needed. And if we invested what we'd learned from the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic in these types of vaccines, we would be legions ahead of where we are at the moment. So we need to take what we've learned to work collaboratively and cooperatively and push this field forward. I think we have in our hands today the power to protect all future generations from pandemics. I mean, that's that's incredible. I mean, this, this is a uh, the biggest accomplishment of the century. Everyone has been affected severely by, by COVID-19. Uh, COVID so I think this is the time to have a very clear conversation on what do we need as a people to prepare ourselves so that next time we can uh, go full swing there. After COVID-19, I believe that all things are now possible and we have a very narrow window of opportunity where governments and, and their voters understand the true nature of the risks we're facing and are willing to spend money to be able to deal with the next pandemic. So we should keep in mind that crisis is a terrible thing to waste and we need a strike while the iron is hot. That's more about what it's gonna take 
you know, human resource wise, funding wise, training wise, you know, what, what are we going to build in the ashes of COVID-19 that, you know, is going to take advantage of this opportunity? Mm -hmm.